Although it may be a lighter week as Wheel of Time news stories go, there is still plenty to talk about. There's a bunch of news from the visual effects companies working with the Wheel of Time and some reels to take a look at. We've also got a new Wheel of Time book in the works and some shots from the set. Additionally, there is an absolute ton of cool community news that I think is worth checking out. And of course, I'll be announcing the winner of the contest from last week to get a Wheel of Time map of your choice, and we'll be announcing another cool contest as well. We'll cover all of this and more on this week's weekly Wheel of Time news. This video will carry a spoiler rating of red, but with only spoilers through season one of the Wheel of Time TV show, there will be no book spoilers, so watch this video risk-free unless you have not seen the first season of Wheel of Time. So our first piece of news is something that I'm super excited about. Back on February 15th, Tor Books announced that there would be a new Wheel of Time adjacent book that's coming out that would cover the mythology and history that inspired Robert Jordan as he wrote the Wheel of Time books. Now this book is titled Origins of the Wheel of Time, The Legends and Mythologies that Inspired Robert Jordan. Now the book is written by Michael Livingston, and it includes a foreword from Harriet McDougal, who is Robert Jordan's widow. Some other features that we know that will be in the book will be that it will draw from interviews and an examination of Robert Jordan's unpublished notes. The book is also going to contain a behind-the-scenes story of who Robert Jordan was, how he worked, and what made him such an important author in modern literature. The book is also going to have a brand new redrawn map of the Wheel of Time world that has changes that were discovered in Robert Jordan's notes, and an alternate scene from an early draft of Eye of the World. Now I'm really excited for this book and literally every piece of the information we've gotten about it is something that I wanna read about and talk about. So obviously it's been a while since we got new book content and although this isn't like Wheel of Time content, it's still Wheel of Time content. And I can't wait to read more about the world. Now we are going to have to wait a while for it. The book is set to release on November 8th of 2022 from Tor Books. So it's going to be a little bit, but it will be this year. But no, before somebody asks, I do not believe that this is tied to the release of season two of the show at all. So now let's move on and talk about some of the visual effects from season one. I know for many, this was a mixed bag, and I'm in that camp. There are times I thought the visual effects were great, and there are other times not so much. But to put it in perspective, they were pretty damn good for a TV show. One issue that typically comes up with visual effects in these fantasy TV shows, at least in my interpretation of it, is the idea that they should look like a Marvel movie with a budget of $250 million. This is still television, and although they had a large budget, they spend a fraction of the money per hour that a big budget movie would. For instance, a Marvel movie will spend $125 million an hour to produce it, whereas we got basically $10 million an hour so again, not even close. Regardless of your feelings, though, of the special effects from season one, there are some very interesting articles out right now that are explaining how some of the visual effects were done for season one, as well as walking through the behind the scenes of some of the choices. Now, I'll have links to both articles in the description of the video, but one of the major pieces from one of the articles was is that they actually intended to give some different colors to the weaves from Side R and Sidene. And they showed some examples of it. And while I can see it in the examples, I don't think they succeeded. Um, I think they were a little too subtle with it in the show. And I don't think it was obvious to us. So if they were trying to make these colors, I don't think we caught it. I thought that the work that was done with Trollocs was pretty good though, uh, especially where they were working with the practical costumes. So when they had the Trolloc costumes and they were adding effects on top of them, I thought that looked really, really good. And I think that's when the Trollocs looked the best. When they had to go full CGI is when I thought they struggled. I would absolutely watch the videos if I were you and I would read the articles. It's really interesting to understand how they made the visual effects, what the thoughts were behind it and all that. What did you all think of the visual effects from season one? Let me know in the comments of the video. Now, one other thing you can do to kill some time in the off season, if you want more Wheel of Time news, is to follow all of the cast on social media. They frequently post updates and have pictures up that are usually the source of a lot of speculation. For example, both Marcus and Sierra posted shots of them near the Eiffel Tower the other day on Instagram, which obviously means the two of them were in France. Now, they don't appear to be shooting any scenes in France. Apparently, that's pretty expensive. But rather, I think they just took a short trip. But you can kind of track their movements on social media. Yosha posted some set pictures the other day. And although they don't show us much, they are worthy of talking about. 
The first picture is just a shot of blue carpet with a post-it note saying that they are for push-ups. Now it was captioned Wheel of Time Season 2. I'm sure this is just Yosha being funny and making fun of a note that he found, but the next picture he released was of the set at night. And as you can see, there's a crane holding overhead lighting. This is obviously a night shoot. There's a structure right here and some trees in the background, but outside of that, it's really difficult to tell what we're looking at here other than the fact they're shooting at night. Now the caption on the Instagram story was, you know it's what when, and that's probably a reference to the crazy number of night shoots that they had to do for season one, and the cast talked about those all the time. They spent days and weeks shooting a lot of the first couple episodes at nighttime all the way through the night. The composer for The Wheel of Time, Lauren Ball, has been incredibly interactive with fans on Twitter and other social media, and he's actually a pretty interesting guy. He is giving away a signed copy of the score of The Wheel of Time, signed by not only him, but also the actors from the show. Now, he's doing this to help raise money for Highland Hospice. It's a hospice charity in Scotland. If you would like to be in the running to win that sheet of music with all the signatures, check out the fundraising page and donate if you can. They're a very short way away from their goal, and it's for a good cause, and the prize is obviously really cool. Here's how the entries work. For every 10 pounds, so whatever that is in your currency, that you donate, you get an entry into the contest. The winner's going to be drawn by the Hospice Center on March 31st, so you still have some time here. You do need to make sure that you don't donate anonymously or else they won't be able to enter you into the contest, but I will have the link to that in the description of this video. Make sure you enter and win the signed copy of the score. Now, before continuing with the news, let me thank this video's sponsor, NordVPN. Nord is the world's number one VPN provider. VPNs provide vital protection for your internet browsing by creating a third-party buffer between you and the internet service provider. It encodes your data so it can't be sold in your browsing history. Really, it can't be sold to advertisers or nefarious entities track your movements, none of that. Additionally, a VPN allows you to watch geo-locked content anywhere in the world. You want to watch Netflix in Japan and you live in the US? No problem. Just log into one of the servers in Tokyo and you are in. VPNs are cheap, but now they are even cheaper. Click the link in the description of the video and get a massive discount on the already cheap NordVPN service. You really should have it if you use the internet. I know you do because you're watching this video. So go get a VPN. All right, let's get back to the news. In community news, there is a Wheel of Time Season 1 fan edit that has been put together by a fan and released. Now, the edit seeks to create what the editor believes is an improved version of Season 1 of the TV show by trying to tell a more cohesive story, but with less content. Now, I have personally not had the chance to watch the fan edit, so I will be interested to hear from those of you who have, and let me know what you think. But my general thoughts without seeing it are that the problems with the show were not due to an overabundance of content, but rather the need for longer scenes. It's hard Hard for me to imagine that cutting out a good chunk of that season would actually improve it in my eyes. I think it actually needed another two episodes and a longer pilot to really hit on all cylinders. But for those of you that have seen it, what do you think? Is it worth a watch? I will have a link to that in the description of this video. Make sure to let me know what you think. Another story in community news is that fellow YouTuber John from What Up has started a new channel to talk about fantasy and other sci-fi properties. Now there isn't much to talk about in terms of Wheel of Time news right now, and that's what he does. So it's a good time to start branching out, and he has done so. I'll have his new channel linked in the description of this video. He has a few videos up already. So make sure to show some love to the community and go subscribe and watch his videos if you're into that type of thing. Speaking of John from What Up, he is one of three creators that are bringing you the second annual Wheel of Time song parody challenge. And in case you're not aware, this is a community-wide event where fans enter their own song parodies that are based around popular music and have a Wheel of Time theme. Uh, let me go ahead and play a clip from last year's winner to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. I beat it. 
so as you can see, these are awesome, and it was such a fun event. The Song Parody Challenge is brought to you by The Dusty Wheel, Unraveling the Pattern, and John from What Up. If you want to enter, click the link in the description of this video for details about how you can submit your entry, and you can also go watch all of last year's entries for ideas, or just to laugh at them, I do it frequently. All of those were truly amazing. I'm looking forward to seeing this every year from here on out. Make sure you guys tune in. I think it'll be aired on the Dusty Wheel. Entries are due by March 15th, though, so if you want to put something in, get to work. Lastly, let's talk about last week's contest. To refresh your memory, last week's contest was to go watch and leave a comment on my read-through series, which many of you did. And I'm glad some of you liked it, even though you didn't know it existed before I pointed you to it. Sometimes YouTube doesn't share it. The winner from last week is going to get a map of their choice from shopwheeloftime.com, like one of these maps behind me. So the winner from last week was... Double Dragon 1561. Now, first of all, I love your name. I love the Double Dragon, the game. Congratulations. Message me on Discord so I can get the details so I can get you out your map. Now, for this week's contest, this week I want you to simply leave a comment on this video with your rating for season one of the Wheel of Time out of 10. I want to know what my viewers thought and those that are still super engaged with news content, whether you had a good impression of the season or a poor impression or in the middle. So just make sure to like the video subscribe to the channel. Those two are always a must to be entered in these contests. And then leave a comment on the video giving your rating out of 10 and why. I'll pick a winner next week and the winner is going to get a free t-shirt of their choice from shopwheeloftime.com. Thank you all for watching and special thanks to my patrons. I could not make this type of content without you. Special thanks to my higher tier patrons that you can see on the screen right now. Also make sure to check out one of these videos here that you might enjoy. Thank you for watching and until next time, peace out.